Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Samuel with Cedar Pine Designs and in today's video I will be working on a French Provincial dresser set. It is going to be a long dresser and a set of nightstands. So for my previous video I did do a set that was similar to this. Um, this one is more of the French Provincial style that I like to do. It has a little bit more curvature to the face of it and it's in really really great condition. Um, there really isn't any damage at all. It's just uh, a little old and outdated as far as the color goes. So I'm going to go ahead and change that and we'll see what I come up with at the end of the video. So I like to start by cleaning it. I am using a solution that is just water and a little bit of Dawn dish soap. I just uh, wanted to get away from the degreasers as I've been told that they're not really something that you want to be breathing in so i switched to that it works great you just really want to get off uh, any dust debris any grime buildup, mm -hmm. just so that when you're sanding it doesn't ruin your sanding pads and you don't dig that dirt into the grain of the wood So this piece is going to be very similar to my last piece. All that I'm going to be doing different is the color and maybe the treatment on the handles. Um, we'll see later on in the video what I decide to do with those. But I started off with 150 grit sandpaper and a lot of uh, a lot of times with these French Provincial sets they have a really thick um, finish on the top of them. So it took me a little time to get down to bare wood with 150 so I ended up switching out to an 80 grit sandpaper which does leave a lot of pigtails and scratches um, so I tend to try and just get it most of the finish off and then do the fine detail sanding down to bare wood with a 150 and a 200. This is a very good example of those pigtails I was talking about. You'll get a lot of swirl marks when you use an orbital sander with a grit of sandpaper that is really rough. So the reason you don't want those is when you go to stain, you're going to see all of that stuff. The stain is going to seep into those pigtails and those deep scratches and you're going to notice them a lot and it's going to look terrible. I've made that mistake plenty of times and you just want to take your time and sand it and just get it done right the first time. A lot of times with these French Provincial sets I like to do the bare wood on top but the wood um, in its natural color has a little yellow tint to it so I like to use this whitewash by Verithane to just um, cancel out some of that yellow tone and give it more of a natural whitewashed look and I think that it looks super good the yellow against any kind of paint just kind of looks off to me, so I try not to do that. Like I said in previous videos, this whitewash is super easy to use. You don't have to worry about mixing paint with water and trying to get that ratio right. And you just apply it. Don't let it sit too long because it will um, tend to stain the wood a lot whiter and it's kind of hard to get off so you want to apply it and then just wipe it straight off and if it's not as white as you want it you can always add more which is the great thing about this next i move on to removing the drawers and as i remove this second one i was greeted with a nice surprise i love finding little things left behind um, it's just kind of cool something different and for this instance i did find a set of earrings i'm not sure uh, if that turquoise is real. I, I assume that it was real silver and then um, I did find a ring. There's two rings but it's actually a set. It's kind of something I've never seen. It fits together um, as one piece and then I found a gold or what looks to be gold but it is not. It is more of a plated um, just you know play jewelry almost uh, but it was pretty cool to find something. I like finding little things and I have a box that I throw all my uh, little trinkets into. And the middle drawer did have a little surprise for me in there too. I guess these are like uh, scarves or something and then a set of red gloves and one cheetah print glove. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Just uh, toss that stuff to the side. So if you notice I am having to kind of force these drawers out and it's not that they're damaged or anything it's just that these metal tracks that they have are like I want to say like the very beginning of them are like 
pressure fitted like you have to get past a certain point before they roll smooth that way uh, they don't just pull straight out when you're opening them or using them so just like my last piece for this one I decided to start with the top first and add the polyurethane top coat to the top and I did get a question in the comments asking why I don't paint the dresser and then do the top last so that I don't have to mask it off or anything and what I found is that when I've done that in the past um, the whitewash or stain will tend to get over and drip onto the sides where the paint is and trying to wipe it off sometimes works but a lot of times with that whitewash it stains and it kind of creates like this foggy film over the paint so then I had to go ahead and tape it off so that I can respray that edge so it just kind of made more work for me then so I decided to just do it this way moving forward I always like to do about three coats minimum. I never like to do anything less because I want it to be nice and durable. And I use a 400 grit sandpaper to just knock down dust nibs and any kind of um, roughness to the surface just so that it comes out really, really smooth. I keep my HVLP spray gun on its highest setting. I keep it at about 40 PSI. And when I say settings, I mean the output of the material is set to max and the spray pattern is also set to max. And I overlap each pass by 50% just to give it some really nice coverage. This dresser did have all the drawers with this sticky back uh, drawer liner. This stuff is a pain to get out, but luckily most of them came out full pieces like this but some of them did tear and rip and I had to use a razor blade luckily I didn't have to pull out the heat gun to get all that stuff out now it's time to remove all the drawer handles because I plan on painting the drawers um, as well as the body so I have to clean behind those drawer pulls and I have to tape off the rest of the drawers so that way I don't get any overspray This always has to be one of my favorite parts is masking off the top because then I get to add all this tape and I get to use a razor knife to cut all of the excess off and give myself a nice crispy line. There's just something so satisfying when you get those long pulls that you can just go all the way from start to finish with one pass. It's the greatest. One tip that I'd like to share about trimming this is that I'm not doing it all the way up to the edge. I like to cut it just angled toward the top so that way it leaves a little bit of that natural wood exposed so that way I can come back in the end and sand off whatever little bit of paint was to overlap that way you get a nice clean edge because if you go right up to the edge sometimes it'll go over that natural um, brown finish that was on there before and then you'll see that and you can't get rid of that because if you try to sand it then you got to try to whitewash it it just becomes a mess so just give yourself a little bit of wiggle room with that. So because this has a finish on it already, I'm just scuff sanding it with 220 grit sandpaper so that way I can create a rough surface for my paint to bond to. And a lot of people always ask um, why I don't use primer. If you don't sand down to bare wood, you don't really necessarily need the primer, especially if you're using a premium paint. Just so long as you scuff sand um, very detailed, you don't want to leave any smooth surfaces because the paint is not going to stick. And when you go to scuff sand your next coat, it is definitely going to peel right off. So for this set, I decided to go with a blue, but I didn't like how bright this blue was, so I always tone it down with some black to create um, different shades of blue. I was going for a navy, but I wanted to go a little lighter, so I mixed it up, and you'll see at the end, I was really happy with the results of this one. I did use this paint to um, create a navy look on one of my previous pieces, and it came out really, really dark, which I liked, because the contrast on it was really good. But for this one, I really wanted a darker, but lighter blue if that makes any sense
Even if you feel that your paint doesn't have any kind of debris in it, um, it's always good to use these filters because you don't want to gunk up the inside of your gun because then you'll have to take it completely apart, soak it in some type of solution like acetone or something to clean it, and it can be a very tedious process. So for the paint, I do the same thing as I always do, two to three coats. Actually, I take that back, <laughs> never two coats. My first coat is always the coat that kind of shows the flaws, but because this set was in such great condition, there really wasn't any flaws. But I do like to use my first coat as a way to see anything that I may have missed so that way I can fix them and do at least two more coats to cover everything. I typically don't show the process that I do for the nightstands in sets like these because it's all the same, but I decided to go ahead and get a couple of shots of those nightstands in here because I normally don't show them. But it's all the same, paint them, three coats, scuff sanding in between with 400 grit so that way you don't leave any scratch marks behind. And a lot of people ask why I don't um, tape off the inside so that way I don't get paint in there. And the simple answer is uh, I just don't really have the time, especially when I'm trying to keep a certain budget and profit margin on these things. But luckily with the HVLP spray gun, it does create overspray, but not like you would think, so it doesn't really coat the inside of those dressers a whole lot. And if you wanted to take the time as well, you could probably clean a lot of that stuff out. So here in California, a lot of the rain has subsided, and we are getting some very, very gorgeous weather. And the temperature is somewhere between 70 and 75, which makes for perfect painting weather. I love summer, I love spring. And I love when the weather heats up, the days are longer, and I can get a lot more work done in a day because I'm not sitting there waiting for paint to dry. Now that I've taken care of all the paint, I remove all the tape and the masking paper to reveal that um, little bit of overlap from the paint that I was telling you about earlier. Now you can just take a 220 grit piece of sandpaper, um, round it out, and then just lightly sand that edge off and it creates a really really nice crispy line between the paint and that top as you did notice when i did remove that paper that there was some overspray that i didn't realize i didn't put enough tape to cover it and some paint got underneath on the top luckily it's clear coated and you'll kind of see right now coming up how i took care of it i did the same thing as i do for the edges i just scuff sanded it up and i don't show the process but i did just take a um, microfiber towel I grabbed my polyurethane and I just dipped it in there with a the towel and I kind of worked it into that area because now that it was scuff sanded it did look dull compared to the rest of the top but once it dried you would never even notice. I really love using Howard's Feed and Wax especially on the outside and the inside of the drawers because it really helps condition that wood and bring it back to life. A lot of times this stuff is really old, really dry, and nobody ever really took the time to condition or maintain the wood. So adding that um, is just the cherry on the top. This has to be one of my favorite parts, putting on all the drawer handles because that means I am this close to being done and all I have to do is put all these drawers back to the spots where they go according to the markings that I put on the back and then I get to step back and take a look at all my hard work and everything that I accomplish on this piece and I have to tell you I am super super stoked so let's go ahead and check this out. I have to say this is one of the most beautiful shades of blue that I've ever done. I really like the fact that in person it almost looks like it has a small hint of purple in it and I love it. So let's go ahead and break down the numbers real fast. This was a commission piece. So they were delivered to me and I had no investment into them as far as buying them. I didn't have to sell them. I had maybe $40 in material even though I had all the paint and everything but if I had to go out and buy some of the stuff it would probably cost me around $40. I charged $800 to redo this set which leaves me with $760 profit 
It took me about nine hours total over the course of about two to three days to finish this set. And that's $84 if you break it down per hour, which is a really good return on this dresser set. I love the look of French Provincial and I hope you guys enjoyed this video.